So we have Trekking the World. This is a two to five player game for ages 10 and up that plays in about 30 minutes to an hour. It is from Underdog Games. So I do like how on the back it shows in general what you expect to see when it's set up on the table. A game board that looks like a world map, cards and chits and tokens and whatnot. So this is, gives a really good indication of what you should expect to see in the box or how it might look somewhat set up. This is really good except uh, especially for those not fully engrossed in the hobby. Um, so that especially as these games come to the targets and Walmarts and uh, Barnes and Nobles and places like that because of course a lot of us in the hobby know to find our friendly local game stores or you hope it's a friendly local game store but they're smaller, kind of like a comic book shop and stuff like that, where you see a lot more of the games like you see on my shelf as opposed to the old school Monopolies and Scrabbles that everyone knows, but you might get bored of or just remember from childhood. A lot of modern gaming is slowly getting into the mainstream, which I really like and hopefully can show it off to everyone here. So let's bust this open. Apparently we will Build your bucket list of destinations and take a whirlwind tour to visit them all. But hurry, your fellow travelers might just beat you there. It's going to be a rule book on top. And as expected, it's right there on top. Let's see if I can set this here without knocking it over the whole stream. So you can see it right here. So first off, okay, yeah. Pretty small rule book. That's kind of nice to see. It, you don't want to open a very vibrant game like this and then expecting something light and fun and airy and then boom, thick rule book and it's too much. This is very simple, straightforward right on the front telling you the components you should be finding so that, and identifying them as well also says you can skip the rule book to watch and how to play video at a certain website which is something that's slowly becoming more prevalent in the hobby which is very helpful for learning because uh, for all of us who like to make videos be it reviews how to plays openings and stuff like this this helps everyone get acquainted with the game before they ever play it and so it's easier to be like, oh, it should look like this because I watched the video or you might listen to a podcast on how to play uh, while you're at work or driving or whatever. So you can get more gaming or understanding as you go on. So a quick glance uh, quickly tells you the object of the game. So you know what type of game it's going to be and what you'll be doing, how to set up, very clear cut step by step instructions with a visual aid very helpful uh, then it goes through gameplay steps uh, your turn with very clear visual examples so this is just straight up front this is something that I would expect out of a good rule book so, so far it's what's the best word to put it it's meeting and exceeding my expectations because you got final scoring over here you got credits on the back a lot of times you see those and it also mentions uh, an earlier game trekking in the national parks which I still hope to get my hands on at some point uh, by the same company it's, uh, but you can learn more about that at the website as well so this uh, is a spiritual successor of that previous game where you're implementing original game rules and creating new ways so for those who know about trekking the national parks, there should be some similarities, of course some differences, be it from graphics to oh, uh, potentially different mechanics as well, to make it feel fresh. So I still need to play the other one so I can't comment on the difference, of course, but just straight up the visual representation of this game in the different parts of the world, very eye-catching, pop right in front of your face and you can immediately tell. Oh, that's part of the ocean. That's 
like most likely Japan because the cherry flower is blooming and Mount Fuji. Just very identifiable things. But very interesting. So your adventure starts here. What is this? Information new to the game. So a quick pamphlet uh, with how to look up the rules again. Uh, how to contact the actual company about it. Interesting that they made that separate from the rule book since they already had it on the rule book. But not a huge deal. Nice. Uh, feels like a postcard style. It's very thick cardstock style, but very cool print on it. Which I believe this print is reminiscent of the trucking, the national parks. Yep. So if you look at the back of this, where it talks about the history, this is that photo they use from that box, from the box cover for trucking national parks. And that's why, because they're, it's a basically a quick advertisement for that game, showing that one off. But nothing wrong with advertising the other stuff, because you want to make sales. And especially when you get like a postcard style look right here, that you can frame up if you wanted to have like a board game art or something laying around your house. Kind of cool concept. 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 Bleh. So first off, unpacking, we got this cloth bag. Very simple, but it's printed on almost like a, a heat transfer right here uh, for the name of the game. We're gonna have the game board. Oh, that that's impressing me already. A full size insert organizer that you can take right out of the box that is very critical sometimes you have inserts that you you're stacking on top of each other and just continually pulling things out to get to the, the piece you actually need it's hard to understand how to put it away pull put this on the table put the box aside and it's a lot easier to start gaming which is what we're going to do so i'm going to set this aside so we can look at the board real quick because that's going to take up some space, and then we can put things on top of the board as we look at them. So let's see how big this is. Okay, so the back is just plain black printing, but not a huge deal on that. That's pretty standard for a lot of games. Instead of a full rectangle, we do have the corners essentially cut off, trimmed, so it's more globe-like uh, for a map that you would find. So we got the rounded edges here and here, do apologize for the glare over here. The light is quite bright. Let me see if I can adjust that at all. Or if it makes it too dark there. It's a little bit in between. Let's color, let's get my down. There we go, that feels a bit more balanced so we can see all the colors on this beautiful board. Uh, which, first thing I notice, um, there might be player reference cards in here, but right here on the board shows your turn. So this is real helpful for both new and experienced players because you don't have to go look it up in the rule book constantly. It says your turn is basically move, which it reminds you it's required, and then choose your actions or action. Um, end game triggers, what would trigger the end of the game, which is really easy to see right here on the board. Uh, you can see all these routes, and some of these do look like they transverse to the opposite side of the board, but what's easy about it, they have the line, but they also say two, like they have the word with an arrow saying that way, so if you follow it, you can easily see the other end of it. And so it's you're not going to get confused, oh, I can't travel around the water from that direction. It's like, no, it's it shows it pretty plainly places for stacks of cards which is easy to find and see on this all of this writing is pretty easy to read they've backed each each location with its a little tag so you're not losing the wording in the background image but they've also added some little i guess you can call it easter eggs or whatever you want to call it of extra little artwork on these little continents uh, kind of little animals you might expect to find there or uh, or kind of different landmarks or something that might stick out more okay so let's see what we have in this organizer now so 
So first off, this organizer had this clear lid. Very, very nice. Fit right on top. But it may be a little hard to tell, but it does have an imprint into it with the name of the game again. You might be able to tell here a little bit. It's right there, imprinted. Kind of interesting how they've done that. Okay, inside here we got some little ziplocs of items. We have, looks like, little suitcases uh, for uh, uh, five player colors. It looks like these are two sided. And I'm going to switch to our other view so we can get some closer looks at these components now. So each of these suitcases are two sided. It looks like they have a two player and a three plus player side. So some of the spacing on this might be slightly different. Nope, oh, it looks like the scoring is, is what changes a little bit for these different rows. And so we have a simple brown, we have an orange, a cream or whitish yellow, we have our, our teal seafoam blue green, and a simple pink. And then to go along with those colors, I'm going to pull out all of these player markers, meeples, hikers. Put them right here. So these will be used on the board, I believe. Uh, as you're traveling around, they kind of represent you or your persona as you play to move about and trek the world. And it does look like each of these color uh, standees, meeples, whatever you want to call them, have a slightly different shape as well. So it's not just a color, it is a shape difference. So this can help you, uh, say if you have colorblind issues and you look across the board, it's faster and easier to spot yourself as long as you understand the difference in them. So that's very nice to see. Uh, that did have one of those silica gel packs in it to keep moisture out. Um, some people like to keep those in their box in the future. I don't typically have too much issues here, so I tend to take them out so they're not in my way when I go to actually game. I'll put these few things back and then we'll go to the next part of our little organized insert. So we're looking for Okay, so they slip right down in there. Of course, these are on top, so I'll put them back away. Do a quick check. These are just some wooden cubes, it appears to be. Yep, wooden cubes. I believe these get collected and placed into your suitcases as you play. Um, very standard. Nothing over the top special about these, but they're decent size, so they're not going to be super tiny to handle at the table. Um, but over the, overall, just very straightforward wooden colored cubes of red, blue, white, and yellow with their own zip lock. Okay. Got a couple of little baggies. Let me show you this right here. So they were sitting in this white portion of this insert, which comes right out of the box right here. So you can set this on the table as you're playing, which is very nice. So you, And you can either pass it around leave it on the, the edge of the map, edge of the board, wherever it may be. So that way you don't necessarily have to. Yes, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. I do hope you're having a wonderful day. So right now we're unboxing Trekking the World. Showing off the insert with different components. Tell me how you're doing, what you've been up to, what games you've been playing, what games you look forward to playing. Okay, so what I just opened up were these scoring chip tokens. Uh, they were both in kind of the reseal stick, kind of over flat plastic bag, uh, not, one, not necessarily a bag, more like an envelope sleeve, so that you easily open, pour out. 
uh, each of these tokens either looks like a five and threes. I didn't see another number, so just fives and threes with this kind of porthole artwork around it. Uh, since a lot of the traveling does appear to be by sea. Okay. And like I said, that fits right in that insert, so you don't have to zip lock them up or anything like that. And Dino Corgi is doing good. Just ordered Mouse Cheese Cat Cucumber, which I'm looking forward to getting to the table. Nice. I do not know much about that game. I've, I've seen and heard a little bit about it. Uh, people talking. I think they may have been playing on the Sovereignty app, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I know some friends have, have tried playing it, but I still don't know much about it. Uh, what style of game is that? Um, we have a score pad in here, uh, so it looks like you score based on some of the different cards, pieces you're going to end up with on your suitcase at the end of the game, and of course the scoring tokens total up. So this is very helpful, having these in the box helpful for scoring, so you don't just have to grab extra paper or keep it on your head. These are one-sided pieces of scoring paper, but depending on how many players you have, you can reuse these pretty easily, or even right on the back. Uh, let's see, right here in the middle of the insert, we have some more cardboard chips. Looks like other scoring tokens. These are wrapped in a little plastic band, which most likely just be thrown away. Oh, there are some twos for some, some different numbers in here. Uh, even goes up to six, it looks like. And they do seem to fit right here into the insert pretty easily, kind of tilted at an angle, easy to draw them out. So saying uh, mouse cheese cat cucumber is sort of social deduction, brain burn, tile laying, maybe bluffing game. Watched playthrough yesterday and it looked like an insta buy. Okay, cool. Yes, yeah, so, uh, a lot of times, like especially tile laying games and the brain burn for those is what really grabs my attention a lot of times. Social deduction for me and bluffing all depends on who I'm playing with. Again, I'm not great at bluffing, but if you're playing with the right people, friends, and just having fun with it, it's not as big a deal. But when you're playing with strangers, sometimes those social deduction games are harder for me to enjoy at least because you're like, it, you can't really read anyone as well. Everyone's still just trying to get to know people. So it's harder to focus on the game itself. But yeah, the tiling aspect definitely interests me. So I'll have to look into it more. And especially if some of my other friends have been trying it, we'll see how they enjoy it. Okay, so in the insert now, we have in another uh, plastic band, we have some cardboard. Uh, I'm not sure what they use these for, so I can't. Let me see if the name's right here on the rule book. We call these the souvenir tiles. Okay, so uh, still talking about mouse, cheese, cat, cucumber. Each player is either the cat, mouse, cheese, or cucumber, and that determines their win-loss conditions. Okay, but you don't know who is what. Seems particular interesting as a two-player game. Okay. That's interesting. So I could see it working better as, especially after you get to know the game and get to understand the win-loss conditions, then you can really use that for the social deduction part and guess at what they're particularly going for. But combining that with tiling does seem like more favorable than just social deduction straight up. But yeah, seems interesting. Um, so the souvenir tiles, these appear to be double-sided. Um, based on if you're playing two players or three or more players. And this was a two to five player game. So they do have some minor, primarily it looks like scoring differences for the two player game. Okay, next up we've got two different things of cards in this insert. Some uh, standard size cards and then some very large ones. 
we'll look at the large ones first. See what we got going on. Yeah, th this is an awesome insert. I did not expect to see this in here. If I open it up, basically had the game board on top and then with the rule book, and then this whole insert just lifted right out of the box. And, and it has this like, mini insert with it, with these scoring tokens that you can then just pass around the, the table as you as you need them. So then you don't have to keep the whole insert on the table as well. So I'm, what, how much they've thought through this is really nice. I guess our first thing of cards, um, if you've been here before, you know I always check for kind of like the quick tear opening on card decks because you never want to ruin a deck of cards having to take a knife to it to tear it open. Uh, fortunately, it does look like the plastic is loose enough. I take a knife won't be as big a deal, but it does not have the quick release open on this deck. Uh, it's hard to see, but are there icons in the bottom of the insert that tell you what goes there? Oh, let's take a look. Um, so in this right here, it appears I'm trying to tell if it matches so this this is the deck of cards that was right there I'm not entirely sure if that's an icon for what it is or if that's just kind of a general icon for the game company because this other corner is different but it didn't it had these um, souvenir to tiles in it that went like that the middle of course only fits the size of the big cards the top where the scoring tokens were going has the name of the game but it's kind of obvious with the, the size of the shape of that um, these two side slots do not have anything saying what goes in them but right now it had a bag of player to uh, player meeples and then standard cubes okay so let's check out these larger game cards like I said I'll have to open the knife but the plastic is loose enough I can get under it and not cut across the cards because I have had a few games where you actually have to essentially slice across the cards to even get it to open which is kind of a nightmare when you want to keep at least the quality and not mess something up okay so it looks like we got some reference cards right up up top five of those so players know what they're doing I keep pushing it out of camera I realize let me do this it's more natural where I've been setting it on the table uh, so there is our front and back the back has slightly different information but it talks about uh, game turn, player turn, which we said was also here on the board itself. Along with, uh, it looks like scoring stuff on the back with end game. Okay, and then the rest of these, a quick glance, it looks like all of these are going to be different. So we'll do a quick scan through them without necessarily naming every single one. But it looks like each one is going to have a front with a very large piece of artwork, some icons and scoring. And then the back looks like it actually has information about that location that may not necessarily affect gameplay, but it's still kind of like some interesting trivia facts. And then telling you in general where you can find it. So Banff can be found in Canada. And then it has a very well done artwork of what I assume is supposed to be the Banff Mountains. Uh, definitely a very vibrant, almost pop art style artwork that is really very nice to see in my opinion. Chichen, it's a Grand Canyon National Mall. Niagara Falls, Old Havana, Teotihuacan, on Yellowstone, Angel Falls, Cross the Redeemer, Galapagos. 
So quite a few well-known places and then probably a lot of places I may not know but are be interesting to learn about. All these have some different icons on the bottom, some that are mixed. So I don't know how many of these, let's see if it says how many of these there are. So these are destination cards and it says there's 48 of them total. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this artwork so far. And how they've varied it from like different times of day. So the lighting looks different on in all of these. So it's not just kind of flat in one direction constantly. It really gives each of these locations a life of their own. So those were the destination cards, 48 of those. Next we'll open up, this is a deck of Journey and Trek cards. Now I already can see it, see if I can find the end of it. This does have a quick tear around the edge of it, as long as I can find where it starts. There we go. So again, nice that I don't have to try to cut this open. Ooh, these cards are very slick, as you can tell when I start to pull it out that that uh, that sleeve. So the nice thing is these are going to be easy to shuffle, but as you can already tell, the stack is wanting to slide. So just bear that in mind if you care about the finish and texture of cards. So we have both A and B journey cards, which there is a place on the game board for right in the top right over here. So let's see what's on these real quick. So it looks like some different actions that occur. From drawing cards, gaining points, to moving. Uh, the B uh, the B journeys uh, moving 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 and points It'll be interesting to see how these are implemented in the game since there's so few and how often they're used I'll put that on the game board so we can look at the rest of the stuff we'll move these so we can really look through all of these trick cards now so first off, kind of cool on the, the background of these cards, kind of how kind of the stamps for going to different locations, kind of like you're traveling and they're stamping your passport or something. Okay, so these appear to have different colors and icons on them, uh, along with different numbers and then values. Try to fit in all of these into the screen at once. So we have the blue waters, green mountains, purple uh, landmarks potentially or historical sites. We have the red cameras and then we have a yellow essentially trekking kind of exploring style. I don't know what the icons actually stand for. I'm making this up as I go because I didn't read the rule book yet. We're just opening up, exploring, and seeing what we have to find in the game. So that's part of the fun of it. Uh, so this deck has ones, twos, and threes. So of course different values of the cards. I assume each of these decks is going to be about the same number of cards like that. So yeah, primarily ones then twos and a few threes. And each pile appears to be the same number of them and 
for the rule book, it says five icon suit each suit contains. Seven ones, five twos, and three threes. So each suit has the same number of cards and the same uh, variation or split of cards within the suits. So I'm assuming that's a deck that gets shuffled and uh, you collect them and use them in certain ways throughout the game. So now we'll show off fitting it back into the box, which of course starts with this insert. I've been putting the deck of cards back where they go. Uh, the decks are not in Ziplocs of any kind. The only thing in Ziplocs, player pieces right here and here. Take these cards, which probably set these over with the cardboard journey tiles, or souvenir tiles. It'll be easier to split, keep it separate from that deck. Scoring pad for there. We had our suitcases that fit right here in the middle. And then this one right on top. With the game box, start fitting it back in. So since I'll probably stand up the box on the end, I'll make sure the bottom of the tray is at the bottom of the box. These are ones that so fit right into the box, no issue. The only thing that was on top before, like I talked about, was the game board, this paper, the basically rule books, pamphlet stuff. This is a uh, six section board that folds right up, fits right in here very easily. There was this cloth bag. It was laying flat, you could easily tuck it into a corner, which as it's used, I'm sure it's going to cr uh, crinkle more and be thrown like that. I'll just test it out that way. Put it in. And those who've watched before know I like to do a shape test, which I, this should fly with passing colors because it has that such a great insert in it already and it seemed to all fit perfectly. So we do a little shake, turn it all over, kind of like putting it on the shelf sideways, you might roll it, you may throw it in the trunk of a car, go take it to your friends, whatever it may be. You gotta shake it, turn it over, see how it, how it works. The pieces stay where they're supposed to in the box, or you're gonna have to sort stuff out when you reopen it. This one should have been perfect because of that insert. So let's see how well thing in the insert stayed. Yep, the closest thing you got is, is those, um, little suitcase player mat boards sliding a little bit but overall that's not going to have any effect on it so ultimately a plus on the insert and organization for the game itself oh and i didn't see that right inside the cover of the main box right here so journey is best measured in fringe rather than miles and then it has another place where it gives you the web address for the rules itself so that's three different places I've seen that link so top of the box on the rule book and that quick pamphlet so they really kind of want you hey go check out the rules online you don't have to read the whole rule book we probably have a video or something for you to explain it which some people really like some people don't so they've given you both options which is really nice so that was trekking the world from underdog games two to five players ages 10 and up plays in about 30 to 60 minutes.